Why didn't U.S. leaders listen and react to what you were saying? Well, initially, of course, they didn't believe it. They didn't want to listen to it. I was trying to rain on the parade. Uh, people were getting rich effortlessly. Uh, people wanted to believe that you can buy a house and you didn't need to save money. Uh, you would just get rich based on appreciation, that they would just, houses would go up forever. And, and because there was that belief, I mean, the lenders, obviously, no one cared about getting paid back. They just assumed that, well, the house will always rise in value. And, and nobody really wanted uh, uh, you know, to, to to be told that there was no Santa Claus, and, and that was basically what my role was. I mean, the reason we're in trouble is not because the housing bubble burst. We're in trouble because it inflated in the first place. We're in trouble because while it was inflating, we were recklessly borrowing and spending money. American citizens borrowed trillions of dollars from people all around the world, and we blew the money. I mean, not only did we spend it on remodeling our homes and building homes, but we spent it on cars, on consumer electronics, on furniture and appliances, on, on food, on, on, on gasoline, on everything that we imported that we really couldn't afford. And, and now that the bills are coming due and we're just too broke to pay them, we're seeing an implosion in these markets. Real estate prices are coming back down. Americans are having to stop spending. Credit is contracting. None of this is the problem. This is all the solution. This is all the consequences of reckless consumption and borrowing. But the politicians don't want to listen to my advice because my advice is that they get out of the way and they let the recession run its course. That Americans have to have some discipline on their spending and their consumption. That what we need in this country is more savings and, and, and less borrowing. We need more production and less consumption. But everything the government is doing now, all the economic stimuli, all the bailouts, they're all designed to perpetuate the problem, uh, to get us deeper into debt, and, and all they're doing is throwing gasoline on fire. President-elect Obama is promising to create or safeguard three million U.S. jobs. Now, the stimulus plan he's preparing will reportedly be worth up to $775 billion. Why do you say that the change Obama is going to deliver is a change for the worse? Yeah, well, first of all, it's not even that much change. It's just bigger government than we had before. It's a bigger stimulus. There's, it's not an understanding of, of the problems. You know, the government is not the solution. The government created the problems. What we need for meaningful change is we need government that understands why we got into this mess and that the solution is less government, less government spending, lower taxes, we need to slash programs. We need to you know, dismantle our, our military industrial complex. We need sounder monetary policies. We need higher interest rates in this country, not lower interest rates. We need to do things exactly the opposite. But Barack Obama is just more in bigger government, and he's blaming our economic problems on the market as opposed to the government, which is where it belongs. And he's talking about creating millions of jobs. The government can't create any jobs. The government doesn't have any wealth. All the government can do is, is redistribute the wealth that the private sector creates. And if the government is going to usurp resources away from the private sector, it's going to destroy real employment opportunities and diminish our standard of living. Do you think the American people are going to have patience with President-elect Obama? I think a lot of Americans are going to be disappointed if they think that Barack Obama can just ride into town and all of a sudden everybody's home equity is going to come back. All of a sudden they're going to get jobs and their retirement, their IRAs and their pensions are going to come back. I mean, nothing is going to happen. The government has no wealth. The government has a printing press and they can create, pretend to create wealth by printing money, but that illusion won't last very long. I think we're on the verge of another major crisis that's far greater greater than the one the government is trying to deal with now, and that is the coming collapse in the value of the U.S. dollar. I think we're going to have a run on our currency. I think the dollar is going to completely fall through the floor, and that's going to unleash problems much greater than the ones we have now because it's going to send both interest rates and consumer prices up into the stratosphere in this country. You said that once the rest of the world senses the direction our dollar is going in, and once the U.S. creditor nations realize that they're going to stop buying our bonds and is going to stop funding our spending. Yeah, well, remember, we dragged the whole world into this economic crisis because they're the loans that they're the ones that loaned us the trillions of dollars that we spent and now we can't pay it back. So as we go bankrupt, our creditors all around the world naturally 
have a consequence of that. But what's happening now is Barack Obama is planning all these massive new government programs and stimulus plans and trillion dollar budget deficits. It's the rest of the world that we're asking to foot the bill. We're asking the rest of the world that is suffering now because of the trillions that they already loaned us that we can't repay. We're asking them to loan us trillions more. And I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think the world is that dumb. I think they're learning a valuable lesson from this experience, and that's don't lend Americans any more money. So it's going to be the Federal Reserve. It's going to be helicopter Ben revving up the printing presses, buying trillions and trillions of dollars of government debt, and the dollar is just going to implode. Nobody's going to want it, not even Americans. When the dollar implodes, what does it mean for Americans living in this country consuming with the dollar? Well, they're not going to be consuming anymore. I mean, because the dollar's not going to buy anything. Remember, I mean, we're, the only reason we're able to buy stuff now is because foreigners will send us all the stuff they make in exchange for our dollars. Mm -hmm. When they don't want our dollars, anymore we're not going to get their stuff and we don't have the factories to produce the stuff ourselves and, and so we're going to have a bunch of money but we're not going to buy anything are we talking bread lines i mean well if the government imposes price controls which is something i think is coming i think under the Obama administration, inflation is going to get so bad that I believe the government is going to, you know, follow the misguided footsteps of the Nixon and impose price controls on various consumer goods, including food items, energy items. And if we do that, yes, there'll be long lines for everything, and and people will start trading on the black market. If you want to buy something, you won't be able to buy it officially. You'll have to buy it in the black market. And what will the black market currency be? Will it be the euro? Uh, will it be uh, silver coins? Uh, what? Will will Americans be trading in illegally uh, to try to procure the things that they need? Because we are on a collision course uh, for massive inflation. So what do people do to prepare for, honestly, the doom and gloom that you're describing right now? What individual Americans need to understand is if they've got dollars invested in, in government bonds, in municipal bonds, in treasuries, if they've got insurance, if they've got cash value, in that, if they've got bank accounts, they've got CDs, all that wealth is going to be wiped out unless they act quickly to get out of U.S. dollars and to move their wealth into foreign currencies, into bonds issued by foreign governments or foreign corporations. They can buy stocks, common stocks traded in foreign markets but where the incomes and dividends are paid in foreign currencies. They can buy precious metals, they can buy gold and silver, they can buy other commodities, but people need to act quickly to get out of U.S. dollars before the dollars lose their value. The fact the U.S. is in such a weak position right now because of the economy, do you think that this can have an effect on its position when it comes to foreign policy? Oh, no doubt. I mean, America is going to lose its role as a dominant uh, player in the global economy. Our entire uh, military presence around the world could come to a very abrupt end when we can no longer afford to support the empire. I mean, we only can afford to support it now because of the overvalued dollar and the fact that we're able to borrow so much money from the rest of the world. But I think once, uh, you know, the dollar collapses, our military might is going to follow our economic might, and we're going to be increasingly marginalized. We're still living off of the reputation that we once had, and we're still squandering the wealth that was handed to us by our grandparents instead of really creating the new wealth. The new wealth creation is taking place outside the United States. It's taking place in Asia. And I think as America falls from grace, you're going to see new economic powers born. And I think as the American consumer dies, you're going to see consumers in Asia born. And, you know, that's one of the, the, the main points that I've been trying to make over the last several years, and people don't seem to get it, is that the United States has not been the engine of the global economy. We've been the caboose. And the rest of the world has been dragging us around like we're dead weight. Do you think President-elect Obama will react to anything that you're saying and change course? Well, I can remain hopeful. I mean, nobody has contacted me from his uh, transition team. No one has contacted me from any place in government. Uh, you know, it seems like they, they want to talk to all the people who have been wrong, all the people who I was arguing with, who said that what I was saying was impossible, that I, you know, that I, that there's, that I, you know, that made fun of me. Those are the people that are being invited to government to, to, to opine on what we should do. Um, you know, they don't give any credibility uh, to my view whatsoever, or others uh, like me who maybe 
uh, weren't on television as often as I was or didn't write books, but we're still arguing uh, the same thing. I wasn't the only person who could see this coming. I was just the only person who saw it coming and then went on TV and screamed about it or, or, or wrote about it. But I still don't think that our, our leaders understand the, the root cause of this problem. They still want to pretend that this was just a, a random event that nobody could have foreseen, that all we have to do is fix things and we can get it back to the way it was. They don't understand that what's happening right now is a consequence of the phony economy that they thought was so great.